Amal Unbound by Aisha Said, Chapters 39 and 40, read for you by Mrs. Shoemaker. Chapter 39 Asif was already sitting at the desk at the Literacy Center, typing on his laptop, when I walked into his classroom. His eyebrows were knit in concentration. He nodded when he saw me. I sat down across from him and pushed the book I'd borrowed across the table to him. Thank you for lending me the book, I told him. How did she like it? he asked. She loved it. She made me read it so many times this morning. I think she's memorized the story. That's great, he smiled. I have some easier ones you can take for her today. She might even be able to read those all the way through on her own, based on the letters and sounds she knows. And good news! I found some great software that teaches math and reading. I've ordered it for the center, and it should be here in time for our next session. Really? <gasps> Thank you so much! While we wait for it to come in, I thought you could practice how to take a multiple-choice online test. I found a few basic reading passages. They're a little silly, but they'll do the job while we wait for the software. He pushed the laptop toward me and pulled his chair next to me. A giggle escaped when I saw the screen. An elephant, a dog, a cat, and a mouse grinned at me on screen. <laughs> I've warned you, a thief laughed. I clicked on the green arrow. It opened a new page with the story. The elephant chases the dog. The dog chases the cat. The cat chases the mouse. The mouse chases the ant. The ant chases the elephant. And around and around they go. Okay, now that that's done, he rolled his eyes, let's go to the multiple choice part. Click the prompt below. It'll show you a smaller screen with the questions. I stared at the screen. Amal, what's wrong? It's cruel. What do you mean? This poem. It's trying to say there is always someone to go after someone and keep the balance of power equal. But it's not true. The elephant is in control. The mouse, the cat, the ant, they can do what they like, but sooner or later, they will all be gone, except the elephant. Pretending otherwise is foolish. There's a saying, elephants fear no other animal but ants. Who is to say if it's true or not, but it's not true. The biggest are not afraid of the smallest. In the end, the biggest wins. The story is trying to teach young children about justice and fairness. But life isn't fair. I will be a servant for the rest of my life because I spoke back to the wrong person. I will be indebted to him my entire life. I was going to be a teacher. I was going to go to college. All my dreams are gone because one person has the power to crush them. And guess what happened to the last group of people who tried to stop him? He burned their village to the ground. I saw the deserted village with my own eyes. They lost everything. And Jawad Saib? He gained more. The bigger always have all the power. They aren't scared of the little people. It just doesn't work like that. My hands shook. I placed them on the desk to study myself. Why did a silly poem affect me so much? I moved to apologize, but he spoke first. Amal, I'm sorry. I had no idea of your circumstances. But even in difficult situations, especially in difficult situations, you can't lose hope. Things change. They might even change for you one day. He said it with such conviction. He could have fooled me if I didn't know better. My great-grandfather was a judge, he continued. My grandfather was a lawyer. My father is a lawyer. He's argued cases in front of the highest courts. When I told him I wanted to be a teacher, he laughed at me. 
Then he threatened to defund my education. But I held strong. I found a way. I'm the first one to be a teacher in my family. No one supported me, but I did it because this is what I always wanted to do. If I thought nothing would change, nothing ever would. I know the situation is different, but things can change even when you don't think they will. You're from a big city, I said. It's different here. That's not true. Things are changing in villages all over the country. Even here. He hesitated before adding, Especially here. He minimized the poem on the screen and clicked a new website. He typed for a moment, and then a news story flashed across the screen. Salim Mushtaq still missing as local landlord, is investigated. A photo of Jawad Saeed stared back at me. The son of a diplomat disappeared not far from here, Asif explained. Apparently, he's one of quite a few to go missing around here. But considering who he is, and that election season is approaching, the police are forced to take it seriously, and they're looking into Jawad Saeed's possible involvement. I stared at the eyes gleaming back at me from the screen. No one would have bothered to investigate a family like the Khans, even a few years ago, Asif said. But people all around the country are fighting the status quo. Things are changing. I hoped what Asif was saying was true, but I found it hard to believe. Asif couldn't understand how things worked here and the absolute power a family like the Khans held in a place like ours. Chapter 40 Nabila, Balal, and I lingered by the door to the main veranda watching Nazarene. She sat on a wicker chair, the tea in her hands long cold, a folded newspaper resting on her lap. What's going on? Nabila asked. I've never seen her like this. Jawad's been gone for days and hasn't returned a single call, Bilal replied. I heard her this morning, I admitted. She also left a message for her husband. She was so upset I thought she might cry. Jawad Saeed is in some sort of trouble, Bilal said. I think that's why he doesn't take me along with him on his trips anymore. He thinks if he doesn't take me, I won't find out what's going on. I read a news article about it, I whispered. They're investigating if he had something to do with a missing person. Who was it? Nabila asked me. It had to be someone important to have the police poking their noses around here so much. Enough, Mumtaz appeared and frowned at us. I hope you're not gossiping about the hands that feed us, she said. It's not our concern what they might be up to. Nabila glanced at me and rolled her eyes, but before she could say anything else, the front door thudded. Nazarene Baji's eyes widened when Jawad Sahib stepped onto the veranda. He was accompanied by a man with a shock of white hair and a thick mustache, wearing a white shalvar kameez. Nazarene Baji jumped up and rushed toward them. "'You're home!' she exclaimed. "'Never thought I'd see the day!' Needed to sort out this police business once and for all, the man replied. I'll be paying them a personal visit today. Mumtaz, go and air out Khan Sahib's wardrobe, Nazarene Baji said. No need. I have to leave this evening. What? Her expression drooped. After all this time away, you can't even stay the night? You don't know the pressure I'm under. The federal police are on my back. They're not as simple to shake off as the ones here. Although they've gotten worse here, too, he glared at Jawad Sahib. I keep you here to handle things, and I expect them to be handled. Never thought I'd you'd make more problems for me. Is this about the missing boy? She held up her newspaper. Why did I have to read about it in the papers like a common villager? 
I told you already, Juwad Sahib said. I don't want you to have to concern yourself with this. Well, it's hard not to concern myself when ill-mannered police officers charge into our house. I've never been so disrespected. How they dared to be rude to you? Khan Sahib's face reddened. Yes! Why do you think I've been trying to call both of you so many times? Nazarene turned to her son. You could have at least sent me a message to let me know where you were all right, Jawad. The way they barged in! Can you imagine what went through my mind? I'm sorry, Jawad Sahib said. I will take care of it, Khan Sahib told her. They won't bother you again. And the things they're saying in the papers. Nazarene Baji shook her head. Her eyes watered. Jawad said none of it's true, Khan Sahib said. That boy comes by to see Jawad, gets drunk, and then decides to play cards with the locals. Loses, refuses to pay. Now he's missing. With the way that boy was used to mouthing off to people, sooner or later something was going to happen to him. But it'll blow over soon enough. Nothing to do with us. Jawad Saeed's phone rang. He glanced at the screen before shoving it into his pocket. Bilal, Jawad Sahib said. Send my meal to my room. Yes, Sahib. And he rushed off. I watched Khan Sahib talk to Nazarene Baji. There he was. The man I'd heard stories about all my life. The man whose photos lined the hallways I walked through each day. He was the boogeyman our mothers invoked to urge us to finish our dinner. When I was Safa's age, I imagined him to be ten feet tall with beady eyes and pointy teeth. Hafsa was convinced he breathed fire. But now he stood a few steps away from me, and he didn't breathe fire, and he wasn't ten feet tall. He and Jawad Sahib were powerful and mean-spirited men. But maybe... Just maybe, even they weren't invincible.